What if the Yakuza series had a fighting game? Over the course of the Yakuza series, a very strong foundation has been set for another genre that could be explored. Fighting games. Imagine that. A Yakuza fighting game. The Yakuza series has everything it could possibly need to make it work, and in this video I will discuss how a Yakuza fighting game would play out, mainly in terms of two important things, the gameplay and the cast of characters. So, gameplay. What kind of fighting game would it be? It would definitely be a 3D fighting game, ideally similar to the style of Virtua Fighter, which makes sense given that the Virtua Fighter 5 remaster is run by the Dragon Engine, and thus would make implementation that much easier. The game would focus on the use of movement and also special moves. As for button scheme, it could go either one or two ways. The first one would be the same controls as Virtua Fighter, if they want to play it safe since those controls already work for fighting game anyways. Or, they could change the button scheme to match that of the Yakuza games. A button for a light and heavy attack, a button for grabs, guards, quick steps, etc. Now the combat will feature a heat gauge, where each character will have a different use for it. Typically, it would help empower moves, open up more options, or allow for super slash ultra heat actions. But now let's get on to what makes a fighting game so valuable for the Yakuza series, and it's the characters, and how each character has their own defined moveset in the series already. Moves that they can translate so well to the fighting games. So first let's start off with Kiryu. For Kiryu, he's going to be using his dragon style, which is a very versatile and powerful fighting style. It's all about building momentum, and it starts off with him playing a bit more defensively in order to build the heat. But once he does that, he'll gain access to more offensive options, and he'll be able to go all out not holding anything back. He's supposed to be the easy to pick up kind of character, the fundamentals character. He has a tool for everything. For Kiryu's stage, I was torn between either the Okinawa Shore or Tenkaichi Street. And I have to choose the Tenkaichi Street, I mean it's the most iconic stage for Kiryu. It's a stage very important for Kiryu, and also I just think it'd be a cool location. And as for alternate costumes, there's so many options with Kiryu and another character as well that I'll mention later on in this video. But I figured these would be the best options. These are his most iconic costumes, in my opinion. So next one I want to talk about is Nishiki. Nishiki is the clone character, kind of like how Ken is to Ryu or Vegeta is to Goku. A somewhat similar gameplay, but more offense oriented, but still versatile. He's all about short range rush down, and he's got good approach and mobility for it. He's going to be one of the easier characters to pick up and master as well. For Nishiki's stage, it has to be the Millennium Tower Penthouse. This is the stage where you have the boss fight with Nishiki, and this is also the climax point of Yakuza Kiwami and the first Yakuza. As for alternate costumes, his is pretty straightforward. It's either this Yakuza Zero outfit, or just shirtless where it shows his tattoo. Now, Ryuji Goda would be another great addition to the cast. He would be featuring Ungabunga gameplay, and he will be having a street brawling style with some rush down and grappling elements, mainly a bunch of tackles and 50-50s, and also big damage combos. Since he's the Ungabunga character, his approach is pretty brain dead, so he can afford to be a little stupid with him, which makes sense given how his character is in the series. Very aggressive, very blunt, straightforward, just completely dives into things without even thinking about the consequences. He's the guy you're gonna love to play as, but hate to play against. As for Ryuji's stage, I was also torn between either the Omi headquarters or the Millennium Tower rooftop, but at the end of the day I have to choose rooftop, it's the more significant stage. And for alternate costumes, his options would be the biker outfit from Ryu Gotoku Online, and also obviously the shirtless. If the characters have tattoos, they're obviously gonna have a shirtless option. That's just how it is. Now, the last versatile character I want to talk about, Mina's going to take the opposite approach of Ryuji. He's a versatile character, but with multiple stances. Kind of like how his boss fight plays out, where he can switch between a normal stance, a very evasive stance where he does a bunch of dodges and stuff, Berserker stance, where he just basically goes ham and can tank through moves, and also the defensive stance, where his aura turns blue and he starts healing and stuff like that. When his health hits a certain low point, he can enter rage mode, which gives him more power from his attacks, allows him to gain more heat, and also gives him more options to use his heat. And it's during his defensive stance where he can consume that heat to heal some HP. This is a character with high comeback potential. A character that can play well from behind, but at the same time, it's not easy to play him. He's got a lot of mechanics due to the multiple stances, and he can utilize things like stance cancels, something that was used a lot in the old Yakuza games. So if you want that Yakuza Zero or Yakuza Kiwami feel, this is the guy to play. He's gonna be the hard character, the tryhard character. Tough to pick up and tough to master, 
but once you get the hang of it, it's gonna be very rewarding. For Mina Sage, it's pretty obvious too, this is where his boss fight takes place, and it's a very scenic stage. As for alternate costumes, well, obviously he doesn't have any other outfits other than him taking off his shirt, so there's that. Now on to the offensive characters, and what better way to start this off than with Goro Majima. He's the offensive rushdown character, a very crazy character with a crazy playstyle. He's going to be the party character with all the wacky moves and setups. If you've played the Mad Dog style, you already know what's up. He has very high mobility, can do dash attacks and all that stuff. Also a lot of setups and mixups, and deceptively good range. This guy's going to hurt a lot. But his only weakness is defense. You have to maintain a good offense, otherwise if the tables are turned against you and you lose your momentum, you're done for, because you don't have any way to get out of it. Just like the Mad Dog style, it's very tricky to learn, but also very satisfying and rewarding. Now it was tough choosing which stage would be best for Majima, but at the end of the day, I believe that the batting cages would be best. It's where he likes to spend his time, and also a lot of his boss fights take place there. As for alternate costumes, this guy has a huge selection of alternate outfits. The iconic ones from Yakuza 0, I was thinking also a palette change where his suit colors match those of Nishitani's as a way to pay homage to him. And also just the different outfits in Kiwami, and the Majima construction outfit in Kiwami 2, and also his suit in Yakuza 3, and obviously his shirtless outfit. If a Yakuza fighting game existed, this would be the most played character for sure. Now, on to the next offensive character, and that's Akiyama. He's the high speed rushdown kind of character. He's one of the biggest glass cannons in the game, and his gameplay revolves around kicks all day. A very similar style to that of Hua Rang, where he has just a huge moveset, so many kicks, and also big combos that do a lot of damage. His main weakness would be the lack of good heat moves, and also no grapples. So because of his risky and somewhat complex approach, this would make him a medium hard difficulty kind of character. His stage would be the Sky Fine's back lot, and his alternate costumes are a detective suit, that funny Cyclops slash Frozone suit from Yakuza 5, and also his formal looking suit from Yakuza 4 and 6. Well, the only difference in 6 is that his shirt is black, so. Now the last offensive character would be Daigo Dojima. He's less of a glass cannon and a bit more versatile, but he does lack in range. So he's all about getting into the opponent's face and building up momentum from there. When his health is slow, he enters full heat mode, and this is where he can do high damage combos, rather than just pokes and stuff like that. And he'd be the only character with multiple stuns, thus giving him a high comeback potential, because he can set up for pretty nasty combos. He will be the easy, medium difficulty kind of character, because of his rather simple design. His stage would obviously be the Tojo headquarters, since he's the chairman, and his alternate costumes are the costumes he had in Yakuza Kiwami 2, his masked outfit in Yakuza 5, his dress outfit in Yakuza Dead Souls, and obviously the shirtless option that shows his badass tattoo. And now we move on to the defensive characters. And the epitome of defense characters would probably be Tanimura. He's all about playing defensively, using mainly grapples and parries, because his strikes suck and his combos aren't that good. He's all about farming heat and using all of it for his damage. So it's very important to be able to understand your matchup, be able to read your opponent, really look for patterns in your opponent's approach. He's a technical yet simple character, if that makes sense. And his stage would be the underground maw from Yakuza 4, and his alternate costumes would be his suit at the final chapter of Yakuza 4, and also just a changed color palette for his costume to reflect Nair's costume, just cause Nair is his mentor kind of thing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have many other alternate outfits. Now, onto the other defensive character, and that would be Kashiwagi. This is based on my experience with him in Yakuza 0 and also the climax battles in Kiwami. He seems very versatile and defense oriented, but he's all about those strikes, and man, does he hit hard. The only thing is, he doesn't have any grapples. He's the type of guy that's really strong, but at the same time, is very low key about it. Most of his moves will have pushback and some of his moves will have guard break. He prioritizes pokes over combos, but that doesn't matter because they'll do good damage. And yeah, he's all about just punishing mistakes. He's a simple but relatively unique character due to the striking based aspect of his gameplay. His stage will probably be the Kazuma family office rooftop or he can just share the Tojo headquarters stage, maybe in a different part of the headquarters. And his alternate costumes would be his look in Yakuza 0 and also his bartender outfit in Yakuza 7.
And now we move on to the grapplers. And what better way to start this off than with Saijima? He is the big guy, the big grappler guy, with slow but strong moves, some of them being able to break guard. He does a lot of damage, but it's really hard to set up his moves because he's so slow, but once he gets a hit in, it's gonna hurt. And with enough heat, he can use this for his Herculean spirit, which basically prevents him from flinching, so he becomes an unstoppable force. This guy's gonna be very basic and easy to play, very much like how basic and easy he was to play in Yakuza 4 and 5. His sage would probably be Tsukimino or Prison, but I figured Tsukimino would be a more interesting location for him. His alternate costumes would be his default outfit in 4, basically just the same outfit but with hair, his outfit when he was when he was doing the hit 18 years ago, and obviously a shirtless outfit to show off his tattoo. The other grappler I like to talk about is Shinada. So Shinada is a different kind of character. He does have grapples, but at the same time, he uses weapons. Because of his use of weapons, it'll give him a good range on his attacks, and it would also be good for farming heat and also for combos, since he can switch between weapons within the combos. Without the weapons, he can have some good 50-50 mix-ups due to his transitional grappling playstyle, and this will prove even more so once he has enough heat. However, he lacks defensive tools. Once the opponent gets in his face, there's not really much he can do about it. He also has low HP, because at the end of the day, he's just a regular guy who's put in a less than regular situation. Just like how he plays out in Yakuza 5, he's gonna be tricky to learn at first, but once you master him, it's gonna be very rewarding and very fun. So his stage is obviously gonna be in Nagoya, Kinecho. And his alternate costumes would be his shirtless look, which does not feature a tattoo, but features his surprisingly chiseled body despite being broke. And also his shrimp outfit, because why not? Now the last grappler, well, sort of, would be Ichiban Kasuka, a very important character in the series moving forward. And thus, why not feature him in a fighting game, in a setting different than a turn-based RPG? He would be the unique power-up character, now he's going to be the most unique character in this game because his moveset's going to be completely different, his playstyle is going to be completely different, and also he does not use heat. Instead he uses a limited resource meter which can slowly regenerate over time. Kind of like Zato with his shadows or something like that. This is supposed to match his MP in Yakuza Like a Dragon. So what's interesting about Ichiban is he's going to start off very weak and just have really basic moves and grapples. But over the course of the round, he can level up and evolve into hero. Now I haven't figured out how he's gonna level up during the round, like maybe if he lands a certain move, or if he collects enough of something along the way, kind of like Phoenix Wright in Marvel vs Capcom in his turnabout mode, something like that. But yeah, because of his evolution from freelancer to hero, he goes from the worst character in the game to the best, befitting of the story behind his tattoo, and also his name. Because of his uniqueness, the difficulty in playing him will vary. His stage will be none other than Yokohama District, and as for alternate costumes, now this one I might have a bit trouble with because if he's going to evolve from freelancer to hero, the question would be how would that translate? If he has that default outfit, it would be easy to reflect the transition, just have him grow into the hero outfit. As for alternate costumes, maybe like for his Onomichiu head, once he evolves into hero, he can just completely become Onomichiu. If he has a devil rocker costume, glow an aura or something or have hell to play in the background. If he's going shirtless, maybe have him transform into the knight costume. Yeah, something like that. And that's about it, except one more thing. Say the fighting game has an arcade mode and say you beat the game almost perfectly and you met the right conditions, you might unlock a secret boss. Now who would that secret boss possibly be? And this would be the secret unlockable character, Joe Amon. He's gonna be the crazy and very versatile zoning playstyle. He's gonna have like a huge move list, right? Like also different modes. He can use drones, puppets, summoning those apparitions like he did in Yakuza Like a Dragon. He can use clones. He can use lasers, weapons, summon patio from the sky, etc. Just a lot of different ways to go about him. He has a huge moveset with the ability to copy people's moves. As you can tell already, he's gonna be a very complex character. Each move and mode are useful for specific situations, so he's going to be a very hard character, but almost OP when mastered. His stage is going to be the Mountain Coliseum, the stage where you usually have that Mon fight. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture of that or find a good screenshot. This was the best I could find, so I apologize about that. As for alternate looks, the only different look he really had was just him wearing a hat. So, I mean, that's something, right? Now this isn't necessary, but I think it'd be funny at a joke character. 
Some joke characters I had in mind were either Date, since he does have that drunk brawler fighting style in one of the climax battles, or Monancho Suzuki, but honestly, I think the cast is big and diverse enough. But if there were other characters besides a joke character or two that would be really cool to have in a Yakuza fighting game, I think it would be, well, first off, the three lieutenants. Very memorable characters and great villains to start off the series with. Each of them will have their different play styles, which will reflect how they played out in the boss fight. Kuze will have the more offense-oriented play style, Aono more defense-oriented, and Shibusawa more versatile since he has different stances for different situations. Other characters I think would be really great to have in this game are Ichiban's friends in Yakuza Like a Dragon. It would be interesting to see how their movesets translate to a more fighting game setting, and I think it should translate well, I mean their movesets are pretty fleshed out. Arachi would be the big tanky guy, Nanba would be the zoner character, Jungi Han would be the complex rushdown. Now, for Jungi Han it's a bit difficult because I feel like there's a lot of different ways to go about his character. I mean one way you can do it is have him switch between short and long range fighting style, or switch between the original Jungi Han and body double kind of like noob and smoke in Mortal Kombat Deception. Just different ways to go about his character, but at the end of the day, he's gonna be definitely the rushdown oriented character. You have a lot of ways to open up the opponent and do a lot of damage. And the last Yakuza Like a Dragon character that would be great for a fighting game would be Ja. He would be the evasion character with very strong strikes and different stances for different situations. A very similar playstyle to both Feng Wei and Lei Wulong from Tekken. Now the last character, and I think would be the perfect guest character to have, would be, well, Yagami from Judgment. But that's obviously never going to happen thanks to a certain stupid talent agency run by boomers who don't want Yagami featured anywhere else. They're the reason why Judgment doesn't have a PC port, and the reason why Judgment's going to be cancelled. Thanks, assholes. Now, last minor thing I'd like to talk about are the stages, the general stages, the non-character specific ones. And there will be a lot to choose from, I mean there's the prison, there's Okinawa Shore, the Millennium Tower from inside, the Colosseum, Sotenbori, Grand Cabaret, the Nagasugai River for Kiryu setting. Since we are already theoretically featuring all the Yakuza 5 cities except for Nagasugai, might as well do it now. Also Purgatory training, and it will probably have like Komaki in the background or something. And last but not least, Theater Square. And that about wraps up this video. Let me know in the comments what you think of my selection and if there are things you disagree with, how else would you think a Yakuza fighting game should play out? Also, which characters would you add and what playstyle would you give them? It would be cool to start this kind of discussion because, well, why not? If you found this video interesting, please leave a like. If you want to see more Yakuza content, please subscribe because I am working on some big videos for this series. Until then, I'll be seeing you. Take care.